Michael and I, we're in love and there's nothing to do about it, there's nothing to say. What I didn't know is that you were going to get so sick. <laughs> One of my favorite people in the whole entire world is Diana Ross. Well, I always knew you would. What? Be sexy. <laughs> Don't you, do you guys think she's sexy? Yeah! Michael Jackson, the king of pop, and Diana Ross, the queen of Motown. Two legendary icons whose relationship has been the subject of countless rumors and speculations. Were they lovers, friends, or something even more bizarre? Michael and I, we're in love and there's nothing to do about it, there's nothing to say. What I didn't know is that you were going to get so sexy. <laughs> Their story begins in the late 1960s, when a young Michael Jackson was introduced to Diana Ross. Diana Ross and Michael Jackson shared a bond that was as deep as it was complex. Diana, who was 14 years older than Michael, played a significant role in his life, becoming his mentor, mother figure, and unrequited love. Their relationship began in 1969 and continued to evolve over the decades, shaping both their personal and professional lives. In 1969, the Jackson 5 signed with Motown, a pivotal moment in their careers. Barry Gordy, the founder of Motown, was captivated by Michael's talent, seeing a combination of James Brown and Sammy Davis Jr. in him. Although Diana Ross was credited with discovering the Jackson 5, this was actually a PR stunt orchestrated by Gordy. The real discoverers were Gladys Knight and Suzanne DePass. Additionally, contrary to popular belief, Michael was 11 years old in 1969, not nine. Introduce me, Michael. You were? No. Well, who else do you think makes the stage come to real life besides me and Ed Sullivan? Michael moved in with Diana Ross shortly after the Jackson 5 signed with Motown. He lived with her for about a year from 1969 until 1970, when his family permanently relocated from Gary, Indiana to Encino, California. During this period, Michael developed a deep attachment and he became what some might refer to as obsessed with Diana Ross. He would often call her mama and his girlfriend. Catherine Jackson, Michael's mother, mentioned in her book that he would refer to Diana as mama. Living with Diana at such a young age had a profound impact on Michael. He was in awe of her elegance, beauty, and star power. Diana took Michael under her wing, introducing him to the glamorous world of Hollywood and the entertainment industry. She taught him about stage presence, fashion, and how to navigate the complexities of fame. Michael absorbed these lessons eagerly, viewing Diana not only as a mentor, but also as the epitome of what he wanted to become. In 1977, Michael Jackson and Diana Ross starred together in The Wiz, a musical film adaptation of The Wizard of Oz filmed in New York. Michael, who was 19 at the time, played the scarecrow, while Diana took on the role of Dorothy. Michael Jackson's mother, Catherine, once said, when Diana Ross was named to play Dorothy, Michael had further incentive to land a role in the movie. He'd been in love with her ever since he and his brothers had been her house guests. You're not pretty until you start looking like Diana, he would tease LaToya and Janet. Jackson biographer J. Randy Terraborelli recounted that in 1977, while on the Wiz shoot, Michael Jackson and Diana Ross would regularly go out at night attending parties and New York Studio 54 nightclub. One of Diana's assistants said he had been trying to get hold of both of them all morning as they were late for filming. Eventually, they got hold of them on the phone and was surprised to find they were in his apartment and that she had apparently spent the night there. Diana later told a friend, Michael definitely isn't gay, further sparking speculation. When this assistant asked Michael if anything had happened between them, Michael said, you'd have to ask her that. And when he asked Diana, she told him he needed to ask Michael. This flirtation between Michael Jackson and Diana Ross would continue for years to come as Michael's infatuation grew, but Diana never took the relationship seriously because of their 13-year age gap. Although this was never an issue for Michael, Diana, on the other hand, could not overcome the taboo of the age and their association when Jackson was a child. She was fearful of how this would impact on her public image and thus her career, and Diana Ross was a fiercely ambitious woman. After a photo session with Diana Ross and photographer Todd Gray, Gray showed Jackson proof sheets, and Jackson ordered two large prints of every picture. The photographer was blown away. Two of every single one? That's about 144 prints, Michael answered. Yes, I can count. I want one set for myself and one for Diana. 
Todd, this is magic. The filming of The Wiz marked a significant period in their relationship. They spent long hours together on set, deepening their bond. Michael admired Diana's work ethic and talent, while Diana was impressed by Michael's dedication and skill. Their chemistry was evident both on and off screen, leading to further speculation about the nature of their relationship. Michael's devotion to Diana went beyond professional admiration. He idolized her, viewing her as the perfect woman. He believed that to be beautiful, a woman had to look like Diana. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, and Diana Ross, the queen of Motown, two legendary icons whose relationship has been the subject of countless rumors and speculations. Were they lovers, friends, or something even more bizarre? Their story begins in the late 1960s, when a young Michael Jackson was introduced to Diana Ross. Diana Ross and Michael Jackson shared a bond that was as deep as it was complex. Diana, who was 14 years older than Michael, played a significant role in his life, becoming his mentor, mother figure, and unrequited love. Their relationship began in 1969 and continued to evolve over the decades, shaping both their personal and professional lives. In 1969, the Jackson 5 signed with Motown, a pivotal moment in their careers. Barry Gordy, the founder of Motown, was captivated by Michael's talent, seeing a combination of James Brown and Sammy Davis Jr. in him. Although Diana Ross was credited with discovering the Jackson 5, this was actually a PR stunt orchestrated by Gordy. The real discoverers were Gladys Knight and Suzanne DePass. Additionally, contrary to popular belief, Michael was 11 years old in 1969, not nine. Michael moved in with Diana Ross shortly after the Jackson 5 signed with Motown. He lived with her for about a year from 1969 until 1970, when his family permanently relocated from Gary, Indiana to Encino, California. During this period, Michael developed a deep attachment and he became what some might refer to as obsessed with Diana Ross. He would often call her mama and his girlfriend. Katherine Jackson, Michael's mother, mentioned in her book that he would refer to Diana as mama. Living with Diana at such a young age had a profound impact on Michael. He was in awe of her elegance, beauty, and star power. Diana took Michael under her wing, introducing him to the glamorous world of Hollywood and the entertainment industry. She taught him about stage presence, fashion, and how to navigate the complexities of fame. Michael absorbed these lessons eagerly, viewing Diana not only as a mentor, but also as the epitome of what he wanted to become. In 1977, Michael Jackson and Diana Ross starred together in The Wiz, a musical film adaptation of The Wizard of Oz filmed in New York. Michael, who was 19 at the time, played the scarecrow, while Diana took on the role of Dorothy. Michael Jackson's mother, Catherine, once said, when Diana Ross was named to play Dorothy, Michael had further incentive to land a role in the movie. He'd been in love with her ever since he and his brothers had been her house guests. You're not pretty until you start looking like Diana, he would tease LaToya and Janet. Jackson biographer J. Randy Terraborelli recounted that in 1977, while on the Wiz shoot, Michael Jackson and Diana Ross would regularly go out at night attending parties and New York Studio 54 nightclub. One of Diana's assistants said he had been trying to get hold of both of them all morning as they were late for filming. Eventually, they got hold of them on the phone and was surprised to find they were in his apartment and that she had apparently spent the night there. Diana later told a friend, Michael definitely isn't gay, further sparking speculation. When this assistant asked Michael if anything had happened between them, Michael said, you'd have to ask her that. And when he asked Diana, she told him he needed to ask Michael. This flirtation between Michael Jackson and Diana Ross would continue for years to come as Michael's infatuation grew, but Diana never took the relationship seriously because of their 13-year age gap. Although this was never an issue for Michael, Diana, on the other hand, could not overcome the taboo of the age and their association when Jackson was a child. She was fearful of how this would impact on her public image and thus her career, and Diana Ross was a fiercely ambitious woman. After a photo session with Diana Ross and photographer Todd Gray, Gray showed Jackson proof sheets, and Jackson ordered two large prints of every picture. The photographer was blown away. Two of every single one? That's about 144 prints, Michael answered. Yes, I can count. I want one set for myself and one for Diana. Todd, this is magic. The filming of The Wiz marked a significant period in their relationship. They spent long hours together on set, deepening their bond. Michael admired Diana's work ethic and talent, while Diana was impressed by Michael's dedication and skill. 
Their chemistry was evident both on and off screen, leading to further speculation about the nature of their relationship. Michael's devotion to Diana went beyond professional admiration. He idolized her, viewing her as the perfect woman. He believed that to be beautiful, a woman had to look like Diana. In turn, Michael's success also benefited Diana. As Michael's career skyrocketed, their association brought renewed attention to Diana's work. Their shared history and connection added an element of intrigue to Diana's public persona, making her even more captivating to fans and the media. During Diana Ross's 1981 special, Michael Jackson was featured heavily. They performed together three times, and Michael was the only other person who had their own performance other than Diana Ross herself. While being introduced, Diana called Michael her baby and they hugged several times. The special also included a mini interview between the two where they flirted and called each other's Michael and I, we're in love and there's nothing to do about it, there's nothing to say. What I didn't know is that you were gonna get so <laughs> Diana Ross's vivacious character and affection towards Michael allowed fans to misconstrue it Diana's personality was infectious, and she was flirty with all men in public, including Michael. It's one of the tragedies of Michael Jackson that he dwelt on this romantic obsession and did not let it go. Jackson even erected a shrine dedicated to the love of his life in his family home, with photographs and mementos. However, Diana wasn't interested in Michael and made several attempts to soften the blow for him. The public saw her in MJ as mother and son. This is demonstrated while on the red carpet with Michael at the 1981 Oscar Oscars, she said, he's going to play my son. As a result, they burst out laughing and walked away. For film, what are your plans in film coming up? We're going to do something soon. He's going to play my son. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> it's great. But even with Diana's hints and gentle letdowns in Michael Jackson's naive mind, he and Diana were in a relationship and he had hopes that they would ultimately be together. In 1983, Michael Jackson once said in an interview, Diana Ross is everything you could wish for. I love her. I hope she marries me. She always tells me her most private secrets. That's the kind of relationship we have. It goes on forever. Michael Jackson was devastated when Ross met her second husband, Norwegian shipping magnate Arne Nyes Jr. in 1985. The two married the following year, and Michael Jackson apparently canceled his attendance to the public wedding at the last minute. When I heard Diana Ross was getting married, I was happy for her because I knew it would make her very joyous. Still, it was hard for me because I had to walk around pretending to be overwhelmed that Diana was getting married to this man I'd never met. I wanted her to be happy, but I have to admit that I was a bit hurt and a little jealous. During 1986's American Music Awards, Michael showed up halfway through the show with a suitable replacement for Diana Ross in the form of Elizabeth Taylor. It was noted how Michael Jackson appeared visibly upset and cold towards Ross during the show, in which he reluctantly celebrated the success of USA Africa's We Are the World's Charity single. Michael Jackson went on to write several songs about Diana Ross and their relationship while recording material for his Bad and Dangerous albums. Songs which were released included 1992's Remember the Time, in which Jermaine, Michael's brother, wrote that the song was, as Michael told me, written with Diana Ross in mind, the one great love that, as far as he was concerned, escaped him. Ross's marriage, however, was not happy in spite of two sons. Diana and Arne were married, yet they lived on separate continents. Diana mentioned in interviews that she couldn't live in Norway because it was cold and dark and didn't want to move away from her older kids family and career in the U.S., Diana Ross secretly saw Michael Jackson even during her pregnancies. He was devastated and brokenhearted but was still under her spell, however. I've always loved Diana and I always will, he wrote in his autobiography, Moonwalk. But as the years went by, Michael's interactions with Diana became more infrequent as she focused on family life and he extensively promoted and toured around the world. In 1991, Diana Ross told the Rock Hill Herald that when he wants to see me, he sees me. When he doesn't, he kind of closes the door. There's no reaching him, there's no finding him, there's no anything. He's just this elusive love out there. In any case, both Diana and Michael faced personal struggles that affected their relationship. Michael's tumultuous personal life, marked by intense scrutiny, legal battles, and health issues, often created barriers between them. 
Diana, who was balancing her own career and family life, found it challenging to maintain a consistent connection with Michael. Despite these challenges, their bond endured. They maintained contact over the years, often speaking on the phone and meeting whenever their schedules allowed. Michael's admiration for Diana never waned, and he continued to seek her approval and guidance even as he became one of the most famous people in the world. Although Diana always had a place in Michael's heart, he called her his world when she visited him in hospital in 1995. He had his then-wife, Lisa Marie Presley, literally thrown out of his room in preparation for Diana's arrival, in which he lavished her with affection and gifts. After Michael Jackson's death in 2009 and many years since they had a close relationship, Diana Ross was mentioned in his will, stating that he would like to leave his children with her in the event of his mother's death. This act, honoring her as the great mother she was to her children and knowing in death she would be best to guide his own, but also honoring their lifelong friendship, the lasting bond they developed over the years and a last reminder of the special place she always had in his heart. Fans have always been divided on the true nature of their relationship. Some believe it was purely platonic, while others are convinced there was a hidden romance. In fact, some are convinced that it was a mother-son relationship. Smokey Robinson, the iconic Motown legend, has recently opened up about his past extramarital affair with fellow music superstar Diana Ross. In a candid interview about his latest album, Gasms, Smokey also addressed a bizarre and persistent rumor that has circulated in the music world for years. The idea that he and Diana Ross are the secret biological parents of Michael Jackson. During his interview with The Guardian, Smokey Robinson was confronted with the outlandish rumor that he and Diana Ross had secretly fathered Michael Jackson. The rumor has long been a source of speculation and amusement among fans, given the close professional and personal ties between the three artists. They say I'm the baby daddy? They say Diana Ross and I had Michael? Smokey exclaimed, laughing at the absurdity of the claim. Oh my God, I never heard that one, man. That's pretty good. That's funny. That's funny. When asked whether Diana Ross was aware of this bizarre speculation, Smokey chuckled and replied, I'm gonna call her and ask her. That's funny. While the rumor about Michael Jackson's parentage is purely fictional, Smokey Robinson did confirm another long-standing story, his affair with Diana Ross. Smokey admitted that he and Diana had a romantic relationship while he was still married to his first wife, Claudette Rogers, a fellow member of the Miracles. Yes, we did, Smokey confirmed when asked if he and Diana had an affair. About a year. I was married at the time. We were working together and it just happened. But it was beautiful. She's a beautiful lady and I love her right till today. Smokey's revelation sheds light on the deep bond he shared with Diana Ross. She's one of my closest people. She was young and trying to get her career together. I was trying to help her. I brought her to Motown, in fact. I wasn't going after her and she wasn't going after me. It just happened. Their affair was not merely a fleeting fling, but a meaningful connection that both artists cherished. However, it was Diana who ultimately decided to end their romantic involvement. After we'd been seeing each other for a while, Diana said to me she couldn't do that because she knew Claudette, and she knew I still love my wife, and I did. I love my wife very much. Smokey Robinson's personal life has been marked by both enduring love and heartache. He married Claudette Rogers in 1959, and the couple remained together for over 25 years, despite Smokey's infidelities. Their marriage eventually ended in 1986, after Smokey fathered a child with another woman. Reflecting on his marriage to Claudette, Smokey expressed deep regret and appreciation for the time they shared. Claudette was not only his wife, but also a key member of the Miracles, and their professional and personal lives were deeply intertwined. In May 2002, Smokey married Francis Gladney, and the couple remains together today. Smokey's enduring love for Francis and his reflections on his past relationships highlight his journey towards personal growth and understanding. Diana Ross's career, much like Smokey's, has been a test testament to her talent and resilience. Emerging as the lead singer of The Supremes, Diana quickly became a global icon. Her transition to a solo career was marked by immense success, with numerous hits and accolades. Diana's personal life, however, has not been without its challenges. Her relationships have often been scrutinized by the media, and her affair with Smokey Robinson adds another layer to the complex narrative of her romantic life. Despite these challenges, Diana has remained a powerful and influential figure in the music industry. After Michael's untimely death, Diana performed a heartfelt tribute to him, further igniting the debate about their relationship. Her emotions on stage spoke volumes, but the mystery remained unsolved. What's more, 
Diana Ross voiced support for Michael Jackson in the wake of the explosive Leaving Neverland documentary, which featured extensive allegations of child essay by Jackson. I refuse you to insult Michael. He's a friend of mine. Yeah. I love him, yeah. and I don't like people making fun of yeah. him. I get real serious when yeah. I talk about Michael, no. and I think we should uh, really kind of look at his life with compassion. He Ross went as far as to write on X. This is what's on my heart this morning. I believe and trust that Michael Jackson was and is a magnificent, incredible force to me and to many others. She called on people to stop the criticism of Jackson, writing Stop in the Name of Love, a reference to the title of one of her biggest hits with the Supremes. Her comments come in the wake of Barbara Streisand, who has also voiced support for Jackson. Needs were his needs, coming from whatever childhood he has or whatever DNA he has, she told the Times. You can say Zayd, but those children, as you heard say, they were thrilled to be there. They both married and they both have children, so it didn't kill them. Following a backlash, Streisand clarified her comments in a statement. To be crystal clear, there is no situation or circumstance where it is okay for the innocence of children to be taken advantage of by anyone, she said, adding that she felt nothing but sympathy for Jackson's alleged victims. Michael Jackson and Diana Ross shared a bond that transcended the ordinary. Whether they were lovers or just close friends, their relationship remains one of the most fascinating mysteries in the world of entertainment. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.